Britain alone, it's reckoned there are 12 million cats. A vast, softly purring army, which it seems we are utterly powerless to resist. And yet, for thousands of years, no creature has divided us quite like this one. Are they regal or simply cold and remote? Devoted pets or as irrepressibly wild as their big cousins? How am I to capture the essence of this puzzling creature, one that so many adore and so many others find deeply unsettling? To do that, I'm turning cat detective. Unraveling this feline enigma everywhere, from the magical tombs of ancient Egypt. How brilliant, it's all done by reflection. To a bizarre medieval cat festival in Belgium. From the cats who formed a Chicago rock band, to a cat in fancy dress. It must be so strange being slightly Little deaf inside a pink rabbit hat. I'll be tracking down the amazing big cats too, coming face to face with the lord of the Mayan jungle. All the strength and majesty of these creatures, you can't believe how beautiful they are. And armed a rasping tongue with the world's fastest cat. I'm trying to talk normally with them, my arm being licked by a cheetah. All to discover exactly why it is that cats divide us so much and how one of nature's most efficient serial killers ended up as our favorite fireside companion. This is my journey into the world of the cat. My journey begins here at home, and it begins with a confession. We don't have a cat. Well, not anymore. For 18 years, we had a gorgeous cat called the Bee. When he died, I missed him more than I could ever have imagined. I still think about him every day. We even gave him a little gravestone. People say that you choose a dog, but the cat chooses you. And people say that cats are aloof. Well, I don't know about that. All I know is that the Bee, our beloved cat, was much more than a pet. He was a friend. We loved him dearly, and you know, I think he loved us dearly too. And yet, I wonder if I ever really knew the bee any more than I know the neighborhood cats that now wander through our garden. Unlike dogs, so much of what cats do is secret and nocturnal, mysterious. It helps to explain why some people find them so disturbing and why so many others find cats irresistible. But where does this deep divide spring from? First stop on my journey, a cat show in Milton Keynes to find the true aficionados, the ones whose absolute faith in cats is beyond doubt. In the West, cat shows like this are the ultimate expression of our modern obsession with cats. Hello, darling. Hi. Yes, sweet one. And you can see why. Was there ever an animal quite as beguiling as the cat? Another Bengal man? Or as adorable as a kitten? Called what? Scylla. Scylla. Scylla Black. <laughs> but no, think of that. Beautiful blue eyes and the slightly Barbara Streisand look. I think it's absolutely <laughs> fantastic. Over the years, we've engineered around a hundred breeds of cat. From green eyes to blue, from long hair to no hair whatsoever. And what breed is she? She's a sphinx. It's a Turkish, Turkish van. It's a snow van. This is a Singapore cat. Very bright, very lively. But look around any cat show like this and you'll notice something which has never changed. It's women, not men, who are least able to resist the lure of the cat. Hard to believe that a few hundred years ago, many of these women, including me, might have been burned at the stake. Along with their cats. Because the terrible truth is, despite thousands of years of our deepest devotion to cats, there's a very dark side to our feline obsession. Thankfully, we don't torture witches and their cats anymore. But once every three years in Belgium, people gather to remember a time when we did. On a warm afternoon in the town of Ypres, their world-famous cat parade is now in full swing. It's all a bit surreal, yet, so far at least, it seems pretty harmless. 
I can't resist joining in the fun. But courtesy of the town jester, the festival culminates in a rather shocking ritual. In Ypres, 500 years ago, nine lives wouldn't have been enough for even the sturdiest of cats. Europe had gone witch-mad, and here in Belgium, they took to slinging live witches' cats off the tops of high buildings. In fact, it wasn't until 1817 that this barbaric ritual was stopped. It's an unlikely thing to commemorate, but thankfully today, the cats here are merely toys. It's so strange because even though this is a sort of carnival day and everybody's having such fun and they're only toy cats, a knife of fear and pain goes through me. Just to think, a short time ago they were throwing real live cats out of here simply because of the superstition that cats contained evil spirits. And it wasn't just the Belgians. In the Middle Ages, it was believed that Satan often took the form of a cat. And all over Europe, they were tortured and ritually killed in their thousands, often also burning alive the poor, innocent women who owned them. Was there ever a creature which divided us so much? For a thousand years, we persecuted the cat as an agent of the devil. And yet nowadays, we go all gooey over them in cat shows. For good or evil, we've long believed that cats have some sort of mysterious, magical powers. But where on earth did that come from? Who owned the first cat? And when? And where? Egypt, the land of the pharaohs. It was here, three and a half thousand years ago, that wild African cats first shimmied and sashayed their way into human company. And even today, there are few cities on the planet quite as comfortable with its cats as Cairo. They're everywhere, literally crawling out of every nook and cranny. Once you tune your eye in to look cat eyes, once you get your cat's eyes in, you can see little cats, tiny cats, slim cats, cats resting by mosques. And these are the cats who are looking after the door. There's one on each side. These cats are mostly feral, homeless, unowned, just like their early ancestors. But for all their wildness, they're every bit as loved as the cats which pose for rosettes at shows. Perhaps even more so. It's just incredible how many cats there are and how many people treated them so kindly. This charming gentleman here who's got a special paper bag full of meat so that he can look after them and they're in beautiful condition. A little dapper, patting away. It's just wonderful. The people don't kick them or hurt them, they just smile at them. But in a largely Muslim city like Cairo, that's really no surprise. It's said the Prophet Muhammad had a real soft spot for cats. There's a story that when he blessed his own pet cat on the forehead, he left the mark of his fingers like a giant M, a mark that's been passed down through countless generations of cats. But when and where did cats come to be with us in the first place? And how did they weave their magic on us? To find out, I'm heading way back in time to the mysterious tombs of the dead in Thebes. Before they came to live with us, cats foraged for their living in the blistering heat of the Sahara Desert. Hardly surprising, then, that the rise of human civilization by the Nile seemed like easier pickings. But the early Egyptian farmers got something out of it, too. Grain silos attracted vermin. The vermin attracted hungry African wild cats. And before long, a rather remarkable relationship had been formed. A relationship first recorded in an extraordinary...